Hey everybody, this is Bruce. This is going to be a vlog video of my race at the Girton Classic that I participated in yesterday. So uh, it's a long video, so let's just get started right at the start of the race here. This is the starting line. I was in group two this time. Last time I was in group three, and I don't know why they put me in group two, because basically the first group is the fastest, second group is the middle, third group is the slowest, and I should probably be in the slowest, but they put me in group two. So here I am. You can see there's a bit of rain already on the pavement. Uh, and anyway, on the screen we have my, my heart rate at 109 beats per minute. Just starting with the speed there as we start across the uh, start line. And the duration just popped up. So you can watch that see how much time this, uh, this race takes me to finish. Here we are at the start. Um, <clears throat> I started towards the rear of the second group. Not really at the back though, maybe lower one-third of the uh, second group. You can see we're, I think, starting off already a little bit hard at uh, 32 kilometers an hour. And at the beginning it's always cold for me because, uh, you know, you put the clothes on, you pick the clothing that you uh, expect to be most comfortable for for most of the race, but the beginning it's always a bit cold because it's, you will get hotter later, of course. <clears throat> You can see my heart rate is, is coming up really fast, just in the low 100s to begin with. Now it's down already up to 170. And just so you know, for the rest of the for the rest of the race, uh, my highest heart rate I've ever seen was uh, 186. So um, that's like the max. So when I get around 180, that's almost at the limit. I would say I can stay in, we'll see that I can stay in the 170s for a long time, but once it gets into the 180s, it gets very uncomfortable. This is just a nice little flat section you can ride a little bit quick on. You can see I have my, you can see my gloves in the screen, I kind of set my elbows on the handlebars to get a little bit more arrow. And this, this guy over here, it's kind of funny, he looks over and then does the same thing. <laughs> so, um... It was pretty cold this day. I don't know exactly the temperature, but I want to say it's probably around 5 degrees Celsius. Pretty cold, raining, and a bit windy. You can even see the wind blowing that banner around. I'd say the conditions... This is my third time doing this race, and I'd say the conditions uh, today were probably the worst I've ever raced this race in. <coughs> Here we are coming on to kind of the first little climb. I don't remember the grade here, it's not too high, maybe 7%. Still quite a few bikes around here. My heart rate's already getting pretty high, 178. This part of the race for me, I, I get like a little bit of a worried feeling because I know it's so early. I've only been two minutes, just about three minutes into the race. And I know I have a long way to go. So, yeah, at this point I'm always feeling like a little bit anxious and worried and kind of like, oh man, this is going to be hard. Oh, there is a, a friend of mine, Kimmy. Uh, with the orange triangle right there in the Scott bike. I'll see him a few more times throughout the race. He ended up being faster than me and finished uh, a couple minutes ahead though. I can tell you now this wasn't my fastest uh, time on this course. I've I've done this course many times in training. It's not that far from my house, and I just like it. It's a nice course. It's 16.2 kilometers or 16.3, something like that. Mostly all uphill. Nothing technical. It's just a, a fitness mountain bike ride. I mean, there's nothing. Anybody could do this basically if you can ride uphill for a long time. Oh, and as I was saying, this isn't my fastest run ever. Uh, I've done this one many times, 
and uh, probably because of conditions and also I haven't been training that much this wasn't my best performance for various reasons I'll get into some of those later And unlike road bike racing, there's not really that much of an advantage. I don't think being in a big group, so I don't worry about it when groups like that start getting away from me. It's not like there's a lot of uh, drafting or anything like that. You know, you'd never go that fast to, to need much of a draft anyway. On this wet day, you wouldn't want to probably be behind any of these bikes while the water they would kick up. Pretty soon we'll take another right hand turn in a tiny little hill and then it'll be flat again. Luckily I know this course, oh, there's a photographer, luckily I know this course pretty well so I know when I should push, when I should relax a little bit. But even though I know that, sometimes it doesn't mean that I actually follow that, sometimes I forget charge at the wrong time and rest at the wrong time. But I think I did pretty good. And you could just see, you just now saw that I cleared my GoPro lens. I did that some, but I watching the video back, I wish I would have done that more. Because sometimes it gets basically unviewable. Okay, here's this small incline. A few degrees. It's pretty short. Right now we're just kind of going on the outside of the mountain, not really mountain, but hill. We're just kind of skirting the outside of the hill. Uh, pretty soon at the end of the straightaway we'll take a left and start charging right up the hill. Okay, now it flattens out. Now I'm putting my elbows back down. Not only just for the arrow, but also just to relax. Sometimes I, I find it comfortable to sit down like that. It's, we had a really strong headwind right now. Maybe that's an excuse for why we're going so slow and going so slow. I didn't realize I was going so slow until I watched the video back. It felt faster. But. Probably also being a bit fatigued from the climb before, even though it wasn't that extreme of a climb. speed is starting to pick up a little bit. There's also a lot of water on the ground. I mean, it's raining and there's a lot of standing water we'll see throughout the race. At this point, I was feeling pretty good still. I wasn't, wasn't tired yet. I mean, I'm only seven, almost eight minutes into the race, so I shouldn't be tired yet. But I was also trying to conserve my energy because I know the course, I know at the end of this straightaway there's going to be a left and uh, that's kind of a hard incline so I wanted to preserve some energy so I could push up that pretty well this race is always a hard race because it's in you know, the beginning to mid of November, so it's kind of cold, it's often wet. Last year it was snowing. At the bottom it was raining and the top it was snowing. And uh, the year before that the conditions were really good. It was foggy, but it was kind of dry, not too cold. Last year was very cold, and this year is extremely rainy and windy and kind of cold. So I would say this was the hardest year as far as the weather. Okay, and here's the kind of what I consider the first <clears throat> kind of real climb of the race. Here's some details on it. Got from Velo Viewer. This climb, this segment is 1.3 kilometers and an average of 9.4% gradient. So, 
Yeah, this one's kind of painful. It's not that bad, but... Holding at 9.9 .9 kilometers an hour here, 10 kilometers an hour. This probably is not sustainable, and I will slow down as I get further up. Heart rate is uh, 177, as you can see, which is... Uh, it's kind of high, but it's sustainable as far as the, what do they call it, your cardio system. Basically, your heart, I can sustain my heart rate at this time for quite a while, but what I find is my muscles usually aren't as strong as my heart is. Like, I can maintain a high heart rate, but my, my legs will get tired eventually. At this point, my legs probably still feel very good, being we're only 10 minutes into the race. But it's a fine line to to do as much as you can while also trying not to overdo it and then, you know, go slower later. You have to evenly distribute your effort throughout the full course, and this is 16 kilometers. Um, I'll save the surprise of the finish time uh, for you till the end, but I can tell you the fastest person that probably finishes these, I think even on this race, was about 45 minutes and I'm nowhere near that but on the other end probably the slowest time I saw was like two hours so somewhere between 45 minutes and two hours <laughs> so anyway that's just to give you an idea you do have to sustain your you know sustain yourself for over an hour or so or whatever Still at 9.3, 9.2 kilometers an hour. Interestingly, my my heart rate went down here. I'm surprised I let it do that. I had actually my running watch strapped to my handlebars under some foam, so I could watch my heart rate the whole race, and I, that's what I did. I did it on purpose because I wanted to stay in the 170 zone kind of the whole race. So most of the times, I think I stuck to that. Okay, now I see how it, I brought it back up. Although the speed has gone down, probably it's, it looks like it's <clears throat> got a little bit steeper here. Now I'm getting up to nearly 180, and that's that's kind of where when I would hit 180 most of the time in this race, I would then back it off a little bit, so I wouldn't be too exhausted. I don't think I can stay in the 180s for very for very long. The time I hit 186, and the few times off and on I've hit 185, we're all running. I think I don't know if I've ever even hit anything over 184 or something like that, 185 maybe, riding the bike. And anyway, I know when I'm running, at that maximum heart rate, I cannot sustain that for long at all. I mean, usually I'm just, at that point, I'm just wanting it to stop as fast as possible, you know. I don't know if that's because my conditioning isn't that great or if that's across the board for all humans when you're at your maximum heart rate, but um, yeah, definitely to me it's very uncomfortable at the max. 180 is pretty uncomfortable, but uh, 185 is, it's funny, it's a small difference, and you wouldn't think uh, it would make a difference, uh, but it certainly does. <laughs> it certainly does. Or maybe it's psychological. Maybe if I think that it makes a difference, it does make a difference, and I, but I think I can feel it. When it's at 185 or so, I just don't want to, I just want to slow down. That's all I can think about, and that's really, it's not, it's hard to describe as pain, but it's almost more, maybe it's a problem, maybe it's a way I'm thinking wrong, it's almost like a panic. Here on the right, you can see somebody, one of the workers, kind of, you know, making sure we go the right way. One thing I like about this race, now I'm not, I haven't done a lot of races, but I've, I've actually helped organize a few races, I've participated in, um, I don't know, maybe seven or eight running races. This is my third time at the Skirton Classic. I did one duathlon, so I'm somewhat experienced with races. And I think, I think, I think that this race is better organized than most other races that I've done or been to. In that they always have people 
uh, on the sides, making sure you don't go the wrong way. I have gone the wrong way on a couple of other races before. Um, I've seen people go the wrong way when I was organizing races because, you know, the helping organize the race because there was a section that wasn't clear. But uh, this one, maybe it's because this is my third time doing it. I've been on this course many times, but I feel like this race is really well organized. It's my favorite race to do, even though it's miserable. Every time it's always, I mean, it's purely uphill. It's steep, it's slow. I think this is still the segment that I was talking about before, 1.4 kilometers at nine something uh, percent. I think this one runs all the way until the peak, which is really soon. So you can see the woods up there. We're gonna go into the woods. Uh, just a short bit later, we'll pop out at the top and then we'll get to go down a little bit and rest. So I know that here, and even though it doesn't look like I'm uh, going very fast because people are passing me, uh, I'm pushing a little bit hard here because I know that pretty soon I get to rest. And you can see that in the heart rate, it's almost up to 180. kind of funny, sometimes you, you see the same people in the race uh, over and over again. There goes four kilometers, by the way. And you just kind of, you pass them, they pass you, you're about the same strength. Other people you pass, never see them again. Other people pass you, you never see them again. thing is this climb is not the steepest out there but it's kind of long and just kind of wears at you a bit but it's still early in the race so you're still pretty fresh you're not suffering that bad I noticed this guy has his bike lock still around his seat post and that's another thing I like about this race actually is it's not like uh, a super serious race. There's all kinds of people here. Some people definitely take it seriously, but a lot of other people are just, it looks like they just, it's their annual thing. They just grab their bike out of the garage and <laughs> just go up. Even they'll have big fenders on the back, like they're, they're commuting bikes or something. That guy had a lock on his seat post. Okay, there I'm at 181, trying to push it for the last little bit here. That's the peak where you see those guys coming up over going a little bit faster, standing up even, tires are slipping, people are still passing me by quite a bit, 80, 183, yeah, that's getting really up there, and now nice downhill. I didn't make any new personal records on any, I don't think, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think I made any new personal records on any of the uphill parts on this race. But I did make some PRs on the downhill, surprisingly. I don't know why that is. I just felt really good and confident coming down uh, this race. It seemed like the ground, even though it was pretty wet, it was grippy. And I was even surprised looking at the speed. It was over 35 kilometers an hour there. I've seen other parts where I was going for over 40 and 50. Even so, other people are still faster. I couldn't clear the camera really on these parts because I didn't want to take one hand off of the handlebar. This part here flattens out a little bit. You can do a little bit of pedaling, but it's still not bad. And you're still going down a little bit, I think. Here we are, 47 kilometers an hour, 48, 49, almost 50. <clears throat> even going mid 30s 35 through the corners and it's not I mean it's pretty flat but there's also quite a bit of pebbles and stuff but if you, you if you're right in the middle line it's pretty smooth 
It's just if you get shuffled to the outside for any reason, then it gets a bit bumpy. Sorry about the camera. Can't see much, can you? Everybody's so fast, though. I'm always so humbled at these races by how fast everybody is. You know, I'll race, I'll race, I mean, I'll ride with other people and I feel like I'm so strong, I'm doing so well. But then I come here and everybody is fast, and to me anyway, and everybody is, not everybody, but a lot of people are really fast, a lot of people are really strong. And even downhill, you know, I'm not even catching up with most of these. Here you can stop and get a drink if you want, but I don't think anybody will do that on the mountain bike. Probably the runners come through here too, I guess. Because this race isn't only a mountain bike race, it's a mountain bike race and a running race. I've never done the running one. Although you can do the running one and the mountain bike one, and that's their duathlon. But it's not a traditional duathlon where you, you know, park your bike and go run. You finish the mountain bike race, then you go down to the start, and then start with the uh, runner. So basically you're just doing both the races. Pretty soon we'll take a left up here, back onto basically the other mountain. The first mountain we were just on was the, uh, kind of the Girton Mountain. And then this other one, you can see that line of bikes, this is the mountain behind the Girton. start climbing again. Not sure why those two people rolled in kind of slowly. There's so many people with the Thomas uh, outfits on. Thomas is a, a bike company here in Switzerland and uh, they make really nice bikes. They're really, I don't know what it means when I say this exactly, but they're really Swiss. I, I feel like they're really, not tr maybe traditional, I'm not sure if that's the right word, but um, Let's just say, Swiss biking people, mountain biking especially, I think, love to get Thomas bikes. And you can see there's so much Thomas gears. In fact, the bike that I'm riding in this video is Thomas. Oh, there goes my friend Kimmy again, uh, in the red and black Scott. I just met him on Strava, and then we wanted to meet up. And we didn't meet up before the race, but we got to say hello shortly after the race. Anyway, um, even the bike that I'm on in this video is a Thomas. It's an older Thomas from 2012 and I bought it used and it wasn't because I wanted a Thomas necessarily, I just, it was a good deal and so uh, it's a great bike though. It's a, I mean a lot of the bikes here are probably better but um, it's a, it's a best bike I've ever had, let's just say that. Alright, here we are climbing again. This isn't that steep And I don't know, but I'm pretty sure that some of the people from the group that left behind me are probably at this point catching up and passing me, especially the ones that you see going by faster. Because I believe it was a two minute staged start. Stage one, uh, group one was when it we was supposed to go 45 after, 945, then I think our group was 947, and then it must have been 949 for group three. I really wanted to start in group three because I didn't like to, I don't like to be passed by so many people and get, you know, mainly because I don't want to get in their way, but uh, I didn't know if that would cause a problem with the timing or, or what, so I, I figured I better just follow what they told me to do. Uh, basically, they sent me an SMS and they said, uh, you are start number blah blah blah, you're going to start in group two. So I said, I thought, okay, I better just uh, start in the group they say to start in. Although I would have rather probably start in group three, like I did the other years, then I wouldn't have got passed by so many people. Nothing much to say about this part. It's a very slight incline. I don't know the angle, it's a few degrees. friend again there. I'm passing him. I had a, a number of friends here, uh, maybe two or three people I knew racing, but uh, Kimmy there is the only one that I 
actually saw. There he goes uh, attacking for some reason. <laughs> he had some extra energy. No, he's probably trying to get between myself and the uh, other rider on the right without, you know, causing any accident. Because it's kind of narrow to go through wide. I didn't even know that was him until after the race. We took a photo together, and so I could see what bike and what clothing he had. And then I rewatched the video, I said, oh wow, there he is. We were racing together, and I didn't even know it. There's probably a couple other people that I kind of somewhat know from Strava, too. But I, I don't know who they are, if I did see them or not. If you are watching this, and you did see me by chance, uh, say hello. I was in a black Thomas bike with, uh, what was I wearing? Oh yeah, well, like almost everybody here, a red raincoat. <laughs> But you might, you might be able to remember I had the uh, skeleton gloves. Skeleton gloves and I had a, actually a mask, a Halloween mask I kind of turned into a front mudguard. So he seemed like a ugly Halloween mask formed as a mudguard. That was me. Oh, there it got really slippery. There was like little pebbles everywhere. There we are, seven kilometers. I'm still sitting at 179 beats per minute, so, I mean, when I watch a video, it doesn't look fast, but I know I was working as, about as hard as I could to be staying at that heart rate. We're 26 minutes into the race. I should be pushing hard here, though, because uh, I know that at this barn we're about to hit, it's going to start going downhill after that. But I also know, after that little slight downhill slash stretch part right here after the barn, that's where the we'll hit a left and will be one of the hardest climbs of the whole race, in my opinion. Not the hardest, but almost the hardest. Okay, here we go down a little bit so we can rest. You can see the person in front of me there coasting a little bit. They have their big old rain fender on there. And they even have their, uh, look at that, they even have their reflectors on their wheel. That's what I mean. In one, on one hand, I just think it's great and it's, it's hilarious and it, it's awesome that people are just riding whatever they have and it's like they don't even care. I mean, for me, I'm such, I'm such a nerd about it, there's no way I'd have my reflectors or a mudguard or anything like that or a chain lock on my bike if I was going to do this race. Because I'm like, you know, every ounce is going to make it harder for me to go up the hill, so why would I have that stuff on there? But, um... It's also very uh, humbling to see how good people are who probably aren't even... Uh, first of all, I'm not taking it that seriously. I'm not like a big training guy. I don't go crazy with it. But uh, apparently some people do take it even a lot less seriously than me. They don't even bother to like take the chain off their bike. And that kind of makes me feel really slow. <laughs> really not that great <laughs> when I see people that are like just showing up on their commuter <laughs> and still riding with me I don't know if it, I mean I almost want to say it's just something it's special for for Switzerland and maybe Central Europe but I, 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 I just feel like your average Joe out here is very fast and I've never really rode in any other other places in the world to speak of you know, like, seriously enough to be able to, to really observe, you know, other people. But I, I would have to imagine that these Swiss riders, just your average Joe rider like me, is faster than people in other parts of the world. I don't know if that's true, but mountain biking is a huge culture in Switzerland. Even uh, the professionals have, have made mention of that. They've said, you know, this is why there's so many professional, good mountain bikers in Switzerland, because the culture is so strong. So kids start doing it at a young age. It's very popular. And I think that's why there's so many people that are fast mountain bikers or very fit mountain bikers. And road bikers, of course, too. Here we are starting on the, what I would call the first hard hill of the, uh, of the race. Real hard one. Uh, here's the graphic. It's uh, only half a kilometer 
but it's 18.4% grade. 18.4% grade and it's muddy. It used to be worse, believe it or not. It used to have like roots everywhere. And so it was not only like muddy, and it still has quite a number of stones. It wasn't only muddy and steep, but it used to be rooty too. So you were like trying to, I remember when I first rode this, this, uh, here goes my friend again. Uh, when I first rode this uh, section, this segment, this trail, I couldn't even make it to the top without stopping and pushing my bike. Now I can do that, I can pretty easily ride up it. Now it's still equally challenging because you just go faster, and so it's still hard. I mean, faster, it's pretty relative. You can see I'm only going 7 kilometers an hour here, and I think I'll even slow down more. But, um, yeah, it's just tough. It's a tough little hill. down to 5.5 kilometers an hour, well, 5.3, this is like walking pace. See that guy's uh, shoes? That's what I should do next time, I should have done this time. They have these kind of covers that go over your biking shoes. Now, first of all, I don't have clipless pedals, so I'm just riding on flat aluminum spiky BMX mountain bike slash whatever you call them pedals. Um, and I don't know if they really have booties for uh, or shoe covers for those type pedals, but if you have clipless like that guy does, you can get these uh, covers, and they'll you know not allow so much water to get into your shoes. That's something I haven't mentioned yet, but that was probably my biggest mistake and my biggest problem. Don't know why that guy was going that way. For the whole race was uh, my shoes. I decided to take <clears throat> my mountain bike shoes. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I decided to take my hiking shoes, my uh, very old, like five-year-old, something like that, uh, North Face hiking shoes, which were kind of beat up, but they have the Gore-Tex liner, so they're waterproof. And so I thought that, uh, hey, waterproof, I know there's going to be water all over the place. It's, uh, it's forecast to be raining right on the race. Uh, I'll wear these, and my feet will be nice and dry and feel good. And that was a huge miscalculation, a huge error, because... Uh, well, also let me tell you this. I was wearing compression socks, like high, like high ones that go to the top of your calf, and I thought that would be nice too to keep my legs warm. It's kind of cold, but I think what happened is they got soaked from the rain and the water, and I think they bled or led the water right into my shoes. I don't know how it happened exactly, but my entire, both of my shoes were 100% soaked, probably around this point in the race, maybe a little bit later but they got totally, totally soaked and they weighed a ton. First of all, these hiking shoes were already pretty heavy because they have like some kind of plate in the bottom. That's what the salesman told me Told me anyway, which, which actually is something. So they have something because they're rather stiff. The sole is more stiff than your average sneaker. You know, so you can walk over rocks and it doesn't hurt your foot. And so these shoes are already pretty heavy for shoes and I, I already knew that going in. I was kind of like, yeah, they're heavy, but at least my feet will be dry. And that was a terrible mistake because not only were they already heavy, but then they were got at some point they got 100% saturated with water. I mean, to the point you know when you're walking around and there's like water just like coming out of the the tongue of the shoe and it's just it's just totally soaked. And with all that, these shoes weighed a ton, and I could really feel it when I was trying to pedal. It was just like felt like trying to pedal with bricks on your feet, you know. So yeah, those green things or something. I gotta do something better next year because this whole pedal thing, that probably cost me some minutes. I don't know how many, it's hard to say how much, but the whole race basically from, let's say, 30 minutes on, <laughs> when they got saturated, it was a burden. That'll help next year. Every time, every year, I say, oh, I'm gonna go faster next year. I'm gonna go faster next year, and it doesn't always happen. Okay, speed has gone up a little bit. I think it's flattened out slightly. But we're still in that same segment, so the average is still 18 point something grade. 
So it's still very steep. So I mean, some parts are more steep. I don't know, 24% or something crazy. Some parts are less. I think this peak here, yeah. There's a green guy standing there catching his breath or something. Uh, this is the end of that segment. And now we have a little bit, no, more than a little bit, a pretty long downhill section here. Now we're going to get off of this little mount, this not a mountain, this little hill, go back onto the main Girton Hill. This is a pretty, can be a pretty fast uh, downhill section. Let's see what type of speed I can get. Heart rate is definitely getting lower here, down to 163. Yeah, I think I was a little bit limited at my speed here because I didn't want to get too close to that guy in front of me. There we go, we're going 49 kilometers an hour. Yep, about 49. Could have gone a little bit quicker, but that's, that's fast enough. <laughs> There's some of these corners have little ditches on the left and right, and you got to be careful not to accidentally roll into one of those at you know 45 kilometers an hour. All right, now we're almost at the bottom, I think. Oh no, one more, one more turn. I need like a little windshield wiper for my uh, GoPro or something. There must be some solution. Yeah, this guy's really going too slow, or somebody is. We could we could go another 10 kilometers an hour faster through here. Okay, this is the bottom. Now we're gonna take a right back onto the street. Oh, and there's the guy with the uh, the neon colored uh, boot covers, shoe covers, right on my right. Okay, taking the right onto the street for a small straightaway. Sorry about the camera. Next, next time I'm gonna clean it more often. And in the race, I'll, I'll remember to reach and wipe it off. I wonder if you, you know, you could maybe you could like put Rainex on it or something. That's an idea. Ah, uh, that's better. Okay, and then this is going to be the start pretty soon of the, uh, I would say, the hardest climb of the whole race. It's not as steep as the last one, but it's longer. It just seems like it's never going to end. Oh, picked a bad line, now I'm stuck out on these pebbles. There's somebody else on my right, gotta get over. There we go. Okay, you know go ahead and put this graphic up. We are at, this one is going to be 1.9 kilometers at 10.7 percent grade. And I put this graphic flat because the actual course is kind of squiggly and it's hard to hard to see. So I flattened that that uh, profile out. Another Scott bike passing me up there. A lot of Scott bikes. There's another Scott. There also is a Scott factory here in Switzerland. I don't know what they do exactly, but I don't know if it's manufacturing or engineering only. I know they do do they do do some engineering there. I don't know if they also do manufacturing. 
but maybe that's why there's a lot of Scott bikes. But anyway, there's a lot of Scott bikes everywhere in the world, I guess. This might be a boring part of the video. You can actually see that my heart rate is getting lower. I noticed, I didn't notice this until I started, I rewatched the video. But my heart rate actually is starting to get lower. It's not reaching so many highs, I don't think. My theory on why that is, is I think that the reason is, is my whole body is actually getting fatigued. And I'm not able to spin the pedals as hard or push as hard as I was before. And therefore my heart isn't needing to beat as fast as it was before. Because I do remember on this climb, my legs got really tired. Okay, now it's going to start getting a little bit more steep. We're 41 minutes into the race, so in about four minutes, the leaders will be finishing. The top number one, number two finishers will be finishing in a few minutes. The heart rate is still not that high, 173. I mean, that's a comfortable uh, position. It's, it's hard, but it's not super hard. And there goes another bike. What is that? I don't know what that is. But this climb did give me a lot of trouble on this race. Uh, I was really, really um, exhausted on this climb, more than usual even. At one point I got so tired even I, I went off to the side a little bit, out of a little bit out of control, almost had to put my foot down. Sitting at 175 beats per minute, that's pretty good actually, 176. I tried to put the gradient information on in the video, but I found it was just very unreliable. My uh, Garmin watch, that's a running watch really, is what I use to capture the data, and it doesn't actually have an elevation, it doesn't have the capability to capture the elevation. So what happens is when I upload it to Strava, based on where the where it is at, it gets the known elevation of that point, and so it doesn't have the true elevation. And then I tried to take I tried to then export that and put it into the video, and it did work and it, it was there, but I would find it was very inaccurate. Like it would it would show something like this at one percent grade suddenly, or twenty percent, and. I don't know what's going on, but it wasn't. Sometimes it was fine, but a lot of times it was inaccurate, and I, I just didn't want to put something that inaccurate up there. It'd just be confusing. I have a feeling, I have a theory, let's say, why that is. I have a theory that maybe the, uh, like the Google Maps 
GPS data that it's it's using might be counting like the treetops in the in the you know it's take it's it's taking anything that's on the surface as the surface I don't know what it is the z coordinate or whatever coordinate it would be and uh, so maybe that's causing it it's I don't know what it is but it, it didn't work out for me probably if I would use my phone which probably can capture uh, all of the oh, there's where I almost had to put my foot down I was so exhausted um, and it kind of disturbed the guy that was on my left um, if I could if I had a device that would ca capture uh, also the elevation data I think it would be more accurate maybe I'll get one of those get something like that or maybe just use my phone but anyway I didn't want to bring my phone in this race you know and it wouldn't fit on my handlebars uh, very well I do have I do have something that I can put it on but I didn't want to do that for a race anyway yeah this was a really hard part of the race for me which is weird because yeah you can see my heart rate isn't super high uh, but yeah I was really struggling here really feeling the pain you can almost see it too like how much I'm moving the bars around <laughs> it probably doesn't help the situation probably makes it worse but I knew where I was because I've been on this course enough times I knew the end is coming up pretty soon here the one bad thing about this hill if you ever ride it is it has a couple false peaks so you we already passed one at least you think that you're almost there and you think oh, okay there it is there's the top I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna push real hard and get that top and then it's just a tiny little flat and then it's up again but I think this is the real peak where you can see those two bikers in the distance I think that's the real peak but unfortunately the real peak isn't really even a peak because then you go a little bit downhill and then there's a really sharp steep part so yeah here I am at the, the peak of this segment the end of the segment anyway um, I always remember trying to shift my gears here trying to get into a, a higher gear so I can get some speed but my legs are so weak after that effort it's like I'm putting it in a higher gear but I'm not really able to push the higher gear even though it's not that high anyway going up there up that uh, route by the way I'm in my lowest gear possible uh, especially you know at the beginning I can start not in the lowest but then eventually I'm definitely in my lowest which is on this bike I have a 24 in the front and a 34 in the back yeah 24 in the front 34 in the back and a 26 inch rim so it's a pretty low gear not the lowest though because when I'm going up there and I can see people in front of me or if I pass somebody I can see that some people have even a lower gear than me I guess that's with some of these um, these huge uh, cassettes you see in the back with like 40 teeth or something like that here I switched the side of the trail to avoid the mud but then I realized that this side had a lot of stones so then I switched back so now we're going up again so there was like it's like the end of the segment it's kinda of the end of the steep part up but then you go up again it's not as steep and not as long but yeah you just get like one minute rest less than one minute thirty seconds rest and then you're back going up again and then we can go down a little bit this part feels really nice when you can finally go down and rest Looks like the speed is off for some reason here. I don't know why that is. It should be going faster than that.
Alright, this part here is, I would say, super tough. It's not that long, but uh, this is a pain because it's very muddy, as you can see right there. And my mountain bike tires, or the back ones anyway, are totally shot. So I knew this was going to be pretty hard. They're almost like a slick in the middle part. But I'm pretty good at handling this stuff, so... I figured if most of the people in front of me could ride through it, I could probably ride through it too. You just have to walk, you have to look at the ground and figure out what parts you need to do little accelerations through to get through. This part you don't. This part you can rest a little bit. It looks pretty solid. I moved over to the leaves to get hopefully more solid ground. Still pretty good. And we are going uphill here. It's not it's not flat at all. I don't know what the grade is. I have no idea. It's not super steep, but it's a bit steep. Maybe 8 degrees. Now it's a little bit hard, so now I need to accelerate. That's why the guy had to stop. Especially here. Accelerate. There we go. Okay, now I'm actually resting on purpose a little bit. I'm going a little bit slower uh, because I know right where those guys are in front of me, it gets really steep. And it's not that I really need to ride up it, but I just kind of like the challenge to see if I can ride up this little part after such a long effort. And it'll start pretty soon, right about here. I need to get some, try to get some speed, lean back, get the rear tire gripping, it's pretty darn steep here. You can see most people are pushing. That guy in front of me is pushing. But I'm trying to ride up the whole thing. And you can see my heart's getting, heart rate's getting pretty high. 179, 180. Now, even here, I didn't touch down. I, I always try to not touch down on that corner, even though I'm going really slow. Mostly just to like, catch a breath. And uh, still riding at this point, even though the guy in front of me is walking. And I probably would have kept riding, but... I'm still riding, but um, at some point I realized I wasn't catching up to this guy, even though he was walking. So I was like, why am I pedaling when I, I'm going the same speed as this guy in front of me walking? So in a few seconds here, I'll jump off my bike and start walking as well. But when I got off the bike, I was really shocked because my legs hurt in walking actually hurt. It was, it was more painful walking maybe than it was pedaling. So and uh, it didn't help me if I look up if I watch my heart rate through here it didn't go down when I decided to start walking so I guess I'm walking all through this part I, I didn't really or maybe it's here I didn't notice or maybe I missed but somewhere I jumped off the bike started walking ah here here's where I jumped off maybe I'm not sure but uh, yeah I walked through a lot of this part Could have kept pedaling, but I thought, for one thing, it was hard to pedal, I'm not going to lie, but I thought that it would be easier to walk, and since I wasn't catching up to the guy in front of me anyway, I thought, okay, I'll rest a second here, not really lose any time, and uh, that wasn't true. <laughs> it wasn't true, it was just as hard uh, to walk as it was to pedal. Okay, here now I have to make kind of a stop, I breathe one breath and get back on the bike. It's a little bit hard to do, uh, being there. this is a, a little bit of a steep incline to jump back on the bike and start pedaling. But I'm pretty good with that stuff, with uh, slow speed maneuvering. And because I don't have uh, clipless pedals, it's pretty easy, easy for me to jump off and on, on and off the bike. This part is such a hard section. 
Apparently it's not that hard for other people because I just got passed by like three people. I think I remember seeing that guy in blue and green before. Those bikes coming the other way are people who are further ahead by quite a bit too. Because we still have to go down, loop back up, and then, yeah. They are probably, I guess, those guys maybe eight minutes ahead of me. Just kind of guessing. It's still raining pretty hard as you can see on the ground. Looks like the speed is probably right again. I'm always impressed with these uh, these fans on the side of the road, hanging out here in the rain, in the pouring down rain, to watch us and cheer. Here's one of the very few single track sections of the course. speed might be off a little bit. Here's a little tiny downhill piece. Now here actually I, I learned something uh, from my friend Maurice. He uh, kind of showed me, I don't know if he showed me on purpose, but if you go down this part really fast, as fast as you can, there's going to be a uphill part at the bottom. If you go down this as fast as you can, you can get up a lot of it just with your momentum going down and it really actually saves you a lot of energy. So I'm trying to blast it down here as fast as I can and uh, get up as high as I can with that momentum which actually helped me catch this guy which passed me a long time ago and this guy who got away from me a long time ago just by putting a little bit of effort in right at the uh, right through that downhill section so that's a pro tip anybody who's watching who may do this race or has done this race you just get going really fast on that downhill you can use a lot of that momentum to take you up. Now my friend Maurice, he's stronger than I am frankly, and he was able to use the momentum to go make it all the way up to this peak here, where he didn't really slow down, you know, a whole lot at all. And that was pretty amazing. And I was behind him, and that's how I learned it, because I was like, whoa, I didn't do that. I was just going up, slogging up the normal way, kind of slow. And I was like, whoa, he just blasted all the way up that hill without even slowing down. And that's great because then you're not as tired once you get to this flat part. Or relatively flat part. Now this little jig here, where you see those bikes that are lining up, in good conditions I've been able to ride up this without getting off my bike. Here, at least everybody at our level was getting off the bike. And when I got off the bike, kind of like last time I was off the bike at that other part, my legs hurt really bad, the coordination wasn't good, uh, my feet were slipping in the mud, and this this part going up this section must have been the slowest I've ever gone up this section. Every time I tried getting a grip, the mud was just slipping everywhere, and uh, my legs were super just bad, and maybe, maybe because they were cold, and uh, I don't know what it was, but I was not doing good here at all with my feet. But this is the top, about to jump back on the bike, but I know that there's going to be a nice little uphill through the grass right up here, which I hate. I really hate this part. I never know if I should try to ride it or if I should try to walk it. It's like muddy and grassy and slippery. So right now I'm riding, I'm riding still, trying to ride. Some fans giving us some uh, encouragement there. And here I jumped off the bike because I was like, this is just not worth putting all that effort into to, uh, pedaling. I remember last year when I did this and I rewatched the video, I tried, I went further and I tried harder to stay on the bike. And I don't think they had these white uh, tape, taped off section last year, but uh, maybe I'll have to watch a video. 
anyway, I put so much effort to try and trying to stay on the bike, and I really wore myself out. So this time, I thought, okay, now I'm going to jump off early and just walk it, and I will say I thought I would save a little bit of energy, but it was still really hard just walking up here. Other people do it better. As you can see, the guy in front of me is making a little bit of uh, way, getting a little bit away from me, and then now there's even a guy on my left coming up. Another guy with a... Oh, is it the same one? Mr. Reflectors? No, he only has front reflectors. Okay, so... Another guy with reflectors. Scott Bike. This part here is a real relief when you get up this part, because it's nice solid ground finally and you're at the nearly the top of the whole thing you're almost done at this point a little bit more uphill but not much it's very windy that's what I remember remember from this part is the wind kind of blowing us around Yeah, right there. You can see the banners flying around. And now we get ready for a nice, nice downhill portion. Probably the nicest downhill part of the entire course, and if it's a nice day, this is a super nice part because up here on your right, you'll you can see a beautiful view of the Swiss Alps, the mountains. Not today, of course. <laughs> and this is just a really nice, easy downhill section. Fortunately, uh, I got kind of stuck behind this guy a little bit. Um, normally, you can blast through here really quickly, but anyway, there's a lot of water. Probably doesn't hurt to be a bit cautious. But here's a tiny uphill slash flat part, and I thought if I put a little bit of effort in here, I could get around him and then go a little bit faster on the next section of downhill which is coming right up and that's exactly what I did and I had a little bit more energy you could see my heart was only 165 I pedaled a bit to get around him and then I could go as fast as I want down this section It goes 14 kilometers, we're one hour and three minutes into the ride. Only a couple more kilometers to go. 40 kilometers an hour, going pretty quick. flattens out a bit here and there will be another small downhill section but it's kind of like that other section where if you spin some some focus going downhill fast you can use that momentum to shoot you uphill a little bit further so I try to go through this section at least on racing when it's all closed off and I know nobody's gonna be here I try to go pretty fast through here you can see we're going 48 kilometers an hour now it's starting to go up a little bit but if you go fast, then you don't have to work as hard going up. And then it gets really steep. And now you're back down to the crawl. <laughs>
I remember thinking, man, my shoes are just so heavy at this point in time. I think I lost a lot of time here compared to my better rides. I think normally at this portion of the stage I'm a lot faster. I remember even once being in a higher gear. Right now I'm in my lowest gear the bike has. And I can I can even see my I can even see the way I'm riding that I'm in, in a bit of distress, the way I'm kind of swerving around. There goes that guy that I had passed on the other uphill section a long time ago. He and I had been back and forth quite a bit. Maybe I can figure out who that is. Yeah, I'm going so I'm going too slow here. Really should be going faster. Well, we're getting to the end, and I don't want to uh, spend a lot of time talking after the race, so I'll go ahead and tell you how it turned out. Uh, this race I finished in 1 hour 13 minutes. I don't remember how many seconds. Uh, that's not that great, but it's not terrible. Last year, I did it in 1 hour 18 minutes, so quite a bit slower. But it was very cold last year, and maybe that's one the reason why. Year before that, first year I did it, I actually was, I think, 1 hour 11 minutes, so even faster than today, but the conditions were uh, really good that year. It wasn't too wet, everything was nice. Now my best time doing this course on training was 1 hour 8 minutes something. So. I was still over four minutes slower than my actual best time, so that's a little bit disappointing. But with the conditions, I'm not surprised that I uh, am a little bit slower. I think if if I would have not had this kind of shoe fiasco that I had, um, I would have probably been a little bit faster, but probably still not at that PR. So what does that mean in terms of the uh, overall positioning? Well, there's 218, 218 entries in the men's category, and I am way back in 150th place out of 218. So, it's not that fast. <laughs> it's not that good, but uh, that's the truth. That's that's where I'm at. If I could have got my personal best, I, I kind of looked at the charts. If I would have equaled my personal best, I would have been, I think, in 124th position. So that would have been better out of 218 but uh, still it's hard you know I, I train uh, not not that you know religiously I, I ride for fun basically and I in the summer I might ride two times a week in the winter and the fall like it is now in the fall maybe once a week or even once every second week so I don't train that much probably compared to a lot of folks um, but uh, yeah I mean I, I tend to think I'm a pretty good rider, but when you come out here, you see, well, there's a lot of people that are good, so <laughs> that's uh, the way it goes. But overall, I still enjoy the race. I had fun, total fun. I mean, it's weird when you say fun. It's suffering, but it's it's fun in the end somehow. And, uh, yeah, definitely do it again. Next year, I'll be faster. Next year, I'll be faster. I have some ideas how I'll be faster next year. I have some hills around where I live and I'm, I'm going to uh, try to train on those like the same hill every time and just try to get faster and faster. And I think by doing that, basically the, there's very little skill to this course. It's There is a little bit of an advantage knowing it, like I, I said some of the secrets and tricks that I've learned, but 
mostly it's just a pure power to weight ratio and sustaining that for approximately an hour and that's really all there is to this one so if you can improve your power to weight ratio you're going to go faster on this course i think if i train right and enough i can do maybe one hour and five minutes that seems realistic to me next year Now, at this part of the race, uh, you're almost finished. You can almost see the finish line. It's just above a couple of these hills. Um, so at this point, I usually start going a bit faster. And we're one hour, 10 minutes, so I'm already, I already know I'm a little bit behind pace. But uh, at this point, you can start pushing faster. Unfortunately, today, it was very windy up here. And uh, <laughs> it, was, it was like, all right, it almost a headwind. <clears throat> so it's hard to, and we are, are going uphill, I don't know if you can see that, but there is a small grade here. I don't know what it is, but yeah, we're going uphill against the wind, so, and we're exhausted from all the racing, that's why the relatively slow speed you see there. But look at the heart rate, I'm not even getting my heart rate that, that high, and I think it's because my muscles are just too tired to, uh, to push enough to need that much more, um, of a higher heart rate compared to the beginning of the race I was hitting 180 right at the very start within a couple minutes of the start I was at 180 now I'm pushing really hard I know this is the finish you know I can I can go as hard as I want there's no reason to hold back and I'm not even getting but 173 if anybody knows about that that uh, situation, just let me know because I, I don't know if my theory is right or or what why that is exactly. Now I think I'm standing up trying to uh, get a little bit more speed. Yeah, you can see my head dipping into the frame. I don't stand up that much on this race. Heart rate's going up a bit now because I'm really, really trying to stand up on the pedals and get some more power. I pretty much always have done this on this race, oh, and, and when I train even at this section, it's pretty steep, but it's all paved, so you don't have any chance of slipping, you can just, you're the very finish almost, you can just stand up and give it whatever you've got, which right here isn't too much. <laughs> Still standing up, now it's flattened out just a little bit. probably sat back down. Look at that wind. There's the uh, photographer. I can see the flash. So I'm trying to stand up and kind of look cool. Who knows what I'll really look like. Never as cool as I think I am going to look like. Trying to finish it out. There's the finish line right there. Trying to finish it out as fast as I can. And to my surprise, somebody else, that guy, <laughs> with the reflector, passed me at the last minute. I thought I was trying to finish strong, and he wanted to finish even stronger. But it doesn't really mean that they like, got another position on me or anything, because, you know, everybody's starting at slightly different times. It's when you pass the start and finish point. So, anyway, that's the end of the ride, so this concludes my bike ride video log. Bye.